Hey guys, Chris and the Ultimate Recycler. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're continuing our quest to empty my emergency storage shed and all this stuff around here. We've got a vintage computer monitor here, uh, be a bit over 20 years old. What am I going to do with it? Well, it's not worth getting going, it's not worth reselling. Certainly if you have one of these, don't just scrap it without doing some research because some of them can bring pretty good money. Just search CRT monitor on eBay on completed items and you might be surprised what some of them make. Apparently the retro gamers love them. However, this one has some troubles. I need to deal with it. So we're going to scrap it out and see what value we can get uh, before we send the screen and the tube and everything to the e-waste transfer station for proper recycling. Let's have a look. It's quite a heavy one, quite a large one. Uh, it's a, a generic brand Olympic. If it was a good, like a Sony Trinitron or something, I certainly wouldn't scrap it. I'd actually look at trying to repair it because they are making pretty good money. Someone has chopped the cord off. This isn't the mains cord, that's the data cable. So obviously that would need repairing for a start, but I assume that it had issues because of that. Uh, they're normally dated, what's that? May 25, 1998. So it's 22, 20 four years old uh, generally anything pre-2000 with computers at the moment I'm keeping because I think it's a good investment I think this sort of stuff will appreciate a lot in value but I do have to make decisions and this one clearly has some problems and I don't have room to store it so if you have one of these in your shed what are your options well assuming it's not worth selling um, you could take it to the e-waste uh, there'd be a transfer station somewhere near you in Australia. You cannot just take electronic waste to the to landfill. They need to go into an e-waste st uh, stream where they're hopefully recycled as much as possible. But before we do send it out there, we've got a depot at our transfer station. I'm going to pull it apart. We're going to scrap it out. We'll see what value we can get. And then we'll just put the case back together and we can take it out there to get rid of it. So let's pull it apart. We're going to have to take the case off. There's a few screws. Let's get to it and see what we can find. Since we're not keeping it, there's no need to worry about scratching the screen. Normally, if it was a repair job, I'd put a towel on the table. Now we have some screws around the casing. There should only be about four and quite possibly the base will have to come off. We'll keep those screws because we'll have to put the cover back on later, but I will keep all the hardware as you've seen me do many a time. Now the base is quite often just unclip. There we go. And again, that can go back on it when we're finished. Otherwise, we've got to put it in our rubbish bin. The recycling station or the e-waste recycling, I would hope that the plastics all get recycled as well. It's going to be an ABS plastic, which can be recycled. It certainly can't be put in your normal curbside recycle bin. But I would like to think that the places that do recycle these have a special contract with someone that will take all the ABS plastic. Uh, it may or may not be the case, but you know, we can only hope. That should be all the screws for the case. Oh, one more at the base. Now, let's see what's in it. Okay, we have a fairly large circuit board and the cathode ray tube or the CRT. We have a nice copper yoke on the neck of it, which is where we're going to get some good value scrap. And also this degaussing cable that runs around the side of the tube. Uh, most of the old ones were all copper. Some of the newer ones are actually aluminium. So we'll check that, hopefully it's copper. This little spring loaded wire here is actually tinned copper as well. So we'll get that out and I'll try and save the springs. I always like collecting the springs. This wire here, uh, I believe, drains the static electricity away from the screen while they're running. Uh, I have seen people say you have to cut that to save electrocuting yourself. There shouldn't be any power in that when it's not running. The thing you do have to be careful about is capacitors, because they can hold a charge. Now, I don't know when this one was last plugged in, and I think it's best to assume when you're scrapping out these things and TVs, it's best to assume that they may still have power in them. So there's a large capacitor there. And there's a few more on the board. So we will try and short that one out just to be careful. But the other thing I'd recommend is you're just using cutters which have insulated handles. We'll start by cleaning up a few wires here to get a little bit more access. And before we go any further, there are the terminals on the main capacitor just here. So with an insulated screwdriver, 
we'll just short them across to make sure there's no power stored in the capacitor so we all should be good to go now to what extent you go to depends totally on how much time you've got and how much you enjoy pulling things apart really if you're just after the quick value uh, this board here should unplug from the back of the picture tube So the board just unplugs there. We'll trim up some wires because I am going to grab most of the wiring. It's easy to get. So I'm not going to worry about unplugging them. I'll just cut all the wires off for now. The main board normally slides out of the housing. This one's got some clips. They're all a little bit different. Still got a few wires to unclip. Okay, there's the main board. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So the value on here, we want this degaussing cable. We'll look at that one shortly too. We might as well take this braided cable. And to get the yoke off, there's usually only a, one or two clamps. There's one just here. So we'll take this one out. And it's an Allen key. That's unusual. These are nearly always Phillips heads. So that's rather unusual to see an Allen key screw here. Anyway, it is what it is. Not hard to undo. Now, is there a second clamp? I don't think there is. So normally you can give these a twist. Like that and there's a lot of silicon around the top so it could be a bit awkward to get off this one they usually slide off very easily you do have to be careful not to break the neck of the picture tube because the picture tubes have a vacuum inside them and should you break something they will implode and then all the glass will bounce back out so certainly sensible to wear safety glasses when you're doing this i've never had one explode on me or implode on me but then again I've never had one with silicon around the top either so you can't be too careful right that should slide off now yep no worries we'll check that yoke out in a minute all we have left on this tube is there's a ring around here with a bit of copper wire in it and the rest of the monitor now can just have the case put back on and we'll look at all the bits we've salvaged uh, this one looks like it's basically just glued on the silicon lever off okay oh, it's just got double-sided tape on it so we might as well rescue the copper that's in there okay let's put the case back together and we can move the big monitor off the bench so now we're just going to put the cover back on and really that's um, just so it, it looks like a monitor when we take it to the transfer station and it protects the picture tube from being accidentally damaged and we really don't want glass going everywhere so i'll just put a couple of screws in here to hold the case together and uh, we can get this great big thing off the bench and now i can clip the base back on uh, i think it went this way there we go good to go now for those that regularly do watch my channel my shoulder is coming good thanks for all your concern i've had surgery this year and uh, i can lift things not above my head but down low okay what do we have left well if you don't want to waste much time and you just want to grab the best bits i would recommend probably not even i mean it was easier to pull the circuit board out so that we could get to this cable but if you're always just gonna to snatch and run i would be after the degaussing cable for its good copper even though it possibly could be aluminium i would grab the yoke because we know that's got some good copper in it look at that beautiful orangey gold uh this is a bit of a bonus you don't always get that coil uh it's not really worth the effort to go for this uh tinned copper but while we got it apart and i said i'll grab the spring as well but certainly if it was just a, a snatch and grab or whatever the phrase is um the degaussing cable and the yoke are the best value there's really not much value in the circuit boards. They will not go in Australia as a mid-grade board. They're only classed as low-grade, so um, you know some places won't even take them. 
most people would probably just trim off a few more wires and throw the rest in the shred steel. Uh, we'll have a bit of a look at those later for anyone that wants to scrap a little bit further and see where we can get a bit of extra value. In the meantime, let's check out the decoising cable first and let's smash the yoke apart uh, probably as efficiently as we can and we'll get the copper out of this too. If you're doing a few of these or if you've done a few CRT TVs, you'll get to know the weight of them and if that was aluminium it would be extremely light. I can feel a bit of weight in there so I'm fairly confident it's copper. What we'll do though is we'll just snip next to these two wires and we'll get proof of it being copper. Oh, that was tough. Uh, and if we can get a focus on here, where are we? Look at that. That's a good focus. Nice pink copper, beautiful. So this is worth stripping and I just run a, a, a Stanley knife around it. Uh, because it's uh, electrical tape, it's pretty hard to actually put through a, a wire stripping machine. Plus the bends always cause trouble, but it doesn't take long to run a blade around there and peel that off. The uh, extra little wires here will just chop off separately. I'm not going to strip those. So we'll do that now. So this stuff's pretty easy to strip just with a blade because the insulation is, the electrical tape insulation is very soft and the wires all run straight. So the actual wire inside isn't twisted as you can see there, which means when you slide your blade along, it kind of runs between some wires, so you don't tend to slip off all the time. So it's not too bad. Um, a bit of pressure and just run it around the wire and it will strip out in no time. So with that done, we'll just peel our copper out. They can be a little bit sticky sometimes, but this copper is not lacquered, so it can go as number one copper or Milbury copper, which is going to be your best copper price at the scrapyard. A little bit sticky at the end here. Once we get it started, it's just a matter of peeling the tape off. Now, because it's not twisted, it does tend to, to spray apart. So I'll show you how I just finish this off. So then I just wrap it around my fingers. And once I've done that, I'll squash it together and give it a twist and it holds it together nicely. And there you have a really nice, beautiful chunk of the best grade scrap copper you can get. So we'll weigh that up in a minute and just see exactly what it's worth. Let's get this coil out of here. I think the best way to do this is probably just to cut through the whole thing. Oh, now we have copper everywhere. It's very fine wire, this. You don't normally have these little coils in CRT monitors, or at least not that I've seen very often. Being so fine, I think that would probably not go as Milbury. I think that would probably have to go with our number two copper. And I'm just going to twist it up. It's very hair-like. Now, it's not going to weigh a lot, but it was there to be grabbed. We may as well grab it. And we'll clean our little bit of tinned copper wire up. Put it, just chop these brass connectors out and as I said I'll save my spring the little brass pieces with a bit of copper in them can go in with the brass that's fine there's a lot of them so it's probably not really worth going to this trouble so that's all we've got there for our tinned copper uh, if you're looking at this sort of stuff and you're wondering if it is copper underneath, just rub a file across it. You'll soon see the colour of the copper come through. But yeah, barely worth the effort for that. Okay, the other good value piece is the yoke. So these come apart usually with the use of a hammer. Uh, they're often quite brittle and the ferrite material can sometimes take a bit to get out from within the copper. They're sometimes covered in a glue as well. But uh, they generally break up pretty easily. Your other options are you could throw that whole thing in just as it is as an electric motor or a coil or a transformer. Most scrapyards will buy all those things the same. You're not going to get a great deal for it. We might just weigh that first and see what it works out at. So electric motors, we're paying about a dollar a kilo. Uh, we've got about 750 grams there. So only about 75 cents if you throw it in as an electric motor. I think it's worth breaking apart for that nice copper. It's pretty easy to do. 
Okay, I strongly recommend safety glasses when you're doing this because bits can fly around. It kind of depends how enthusiastic you are with the hammer. But generally I find the plastic breaks fairly easily. They're all a little bit different. And you see, sometimes I save these clamps. They're often stainless steel. Uh, you can see it comes apart pretty easily. Sometimes there's clips you can undo. Uh, as I said, every one of them seems to be different. If you don't want heaps of plastic fragments flying around your shed, I would recommend probably maybe putting a towel over it and then hitting the towel. But uh, we're not doing too bad today. Now, we've just been doing the plastic at this stage. This one has a, a ferrite uh, ring around it and that should be very brittle but it also breaks like glass and you don't want a lot of little fragments around so I tend not to swing too hard at it and just crack it if we can there we go so that way we don't have so many little fragments all around the, the shed floor but it's also got some glue in there I see as well I'll try a screwdriver to help that so there's no sense really doing the smash up job in like record time and having it all apart in say 10 seconds but then having to do a 10 minute sweep up of your shed. Should also probably have gloves because that can be quite sharp. But they're coming apart pretty easily there now I think. Okay. So this is a bit different than some of the TV uh, monitor uh, TV yokes. Uh, quite a lot of the TV ones actually have a coil of copper wire around a piece of ferrite, and it's really difficult to get the ferrite out from inside it. But this one's not too bad. All right, just clean this up now. So now to clean up our spoils, we're going to have some plastic rubbish. The ferrite pieces can actually go in with your shred steel. Uh, I've just got a bucket to put that sort of stuff in, which will go to the transfer station. Uh, the little clamp here that I grabbed is actually stainless steel. So that can go into the stainless bin uh, steel, or I have a jar or a container for clamps that I actually sell through the shop because it's quite a useful clamp. And we'll just trim up our copper. Now this is all going to go as number two copper because it's actually lacquered and it does have some glue on it as well but it's going to add up to a fair bit of weight so we have a little bit of wiring here we can save um, but really not much and there are a couple of little spools there I'm probably not going to worry about trying to get that off they can just go into some electric motors or transformers and we have just a little board here I'll trim the wires off that and the board can go as e-waste there's no value there for me um, I'll probably snip the wires off the uh, unravel the wires from the little bead here it's a ferrite bead and I've used them you find them everywhere and they're used quite a lot I got a few more off some wires just before I tend to save them and put them in a jar I don't know some people use them for craft uh, someone might use them for their intended purpose which is basically with the wire going around it it suppresses uh, electronic noise or interference I believe um, but rather than just throw them in with the rest of the ferrite scrap in in with shred steel I'll put them in a jar and I can sell them so all we have left of this scrap out guys is the main circuit board and the board that went on top of the CRT I'm just going to trim the wires off and that's pretty much where I'll stop with my scrapping um, but as I said at the start it depends how much time you've got on your hands and how much you like pulling things apart so I'll just trim these wires up and then we'll point out a few other things on the boards that people chase. I possibly will just leave the transformer off because they come off pretty easily. And the other thing I'll do is probably take a couple of the IC chips. But I'll explain that in a tick. Let me clean up the wires first. Okay, so I've tri trimmed the wire up. I've pretty well finished what I normally do as far as pulling scrap out of these monitors or TVs for that matter. I generally don't muck around with the boards too much, but I'll show you a couple of things that I do grab. And I'll explain what some other people like to chase and why. So I would probably grab uh, the transformer as I mentioned and any big copper coils. Uh, there's one over here. Uh, 
they don't add up to a great deal but they're generally pretty easy to get out so a long screwdriver generally levers these things out fairly easily it does depend on the gauge of the copper wire as to how tightly they hang onto the circuit board but you see that one came out quite easily they could go in with transformers I did do a video once on, on unraveling these for the copper wire and the larger ones are kind of worthwhile but the smaller ones I don't bother with but as far as this uh, video goes we're just going to lever out a few of the easy to get to little transformers because they do add up and at about a dollar a kilo they're good to save up because they're kind of kind of quite heavy for the space they take up and that that's attractive to me uh, so there's only one other larger transformer on here that's this one here and it doesn't really matter if we break the circuit board as I said, it depends on the gauge of the wire sometimes as to how easy they come out. If a screwdriver doesn't work that well, you can have success with some big channel lock pliers. Let's see how we go here. Okay, that one put up a bit of a fight. So I don't usually muck around with them too much, but there's pretty good weight in that. Now this other transformer thing over here is known as a flyback transformer and I believe they've got very little copper in them and I don't think a lot of scrapyards will take them so I don't worry about those at all. Uh, there's not much else on the board that I want. You will see people chasing the extruded aluminium heat sinks but for the amount of weight you get out of them uh, I don't worry about those. But I am going to grab there's a couple of IC chips here that actually just plug in socket ones so they'll flick out really easily. Generally, just a screwdriver will flick them out of the sockets and I grab them. Now, they do pay a price per kilo. It depends where you are. Uh, again, because they're small, they don't take up much room to store and they don't pay too bad once you get a decent weight of them. If they're really easy to flick out like they are here, I will save them. I've never ever sold any yet. I just keep stacking them aside. So one day I might cash them in. The ones that are actually soldered in and aren't in sockets... I don't usually worry about, um, they're just a bit difficult to get out and it's all a matter of, you know, you don't want to waste too much time. However, if you like to get every every little skerrick of value off these boards, well, you might choose to try and leave them out. Sometimes they come out okay, sometimes they just break and that one's not going to come out at all. You can kind of chisel the legs on one side and bend them back and forward. But unless they pop out really easily, I don't worry about them. Again, sometimes if you've got pretty good access, you can use the channel lock, channel lock pliers. But that just smashed the top off it. So I'm not going to worry about those. I will take the ones that pull out of the sockets. But other than that, I'll leave them. Now, while we've got the pliers out, some of these coils or inductors are worth grabbing. And I know plenty of scrappers that like to unravel them for the copper wire. So that will have a spool of copper under that plastic. Let's have a look. Okay, you can see there's a spool of copper under there. So they can go with the transformers. And they do pull off very easily, so I will sometimes grab those. Okay, so let's point out a few more things. If we scan around the board, the little capacitors are not worth grabbing. They are in aluminium cases, but it's such a thin case you would never bother with those. Well, I certainly don't. Uh, that's a crystal oscillator there, and I know plenty of people that break them out. Um, I've never yet seen any proof that they're worthwhile. Uh, it's perpetrated that they have silver in them, but it would be such a minor amount, and they're in a steel can, so even extracting the silver, I'm sure, wouldn't be worthwhile. So I don't worry about those. Uh, we have capacitors of various types. Uh, again, people talk about... Um, tantalum capacitors but look it's so much confusion around there about what which ones are and which ones aren't and again I'm, I've never yet really seen anyone demonstrate that you can sell them and make a decent amount of money out of them they're so small they're so lightweight and occasionally I've searched on eBay to see if people sell tantalum capacitors and very rarely you find a listing and if you do they usually haven't sold so I don't worry about any of those there's a little transformer there I probably wouldn't worry about. I'll, I'll get you back on screen. There's a couple more coils there. If they flick out, okay, I'll take them. 
but as I said, I don't worry too much about circuit boards. Uh, aluminium, that's aluminium around the side of the flyback transformer, but again, there's so many things attached to it that it takes a lot of time to get it off. Aluminium is simply not worth enough for me to do. Same with this screen here. They're riveted on the base. It's also got a MOSFET transistor screwed to it because it's actually a heatsink. And that brings me to the point of the MOSFET transistors as well. We'll see if we can access one to show you. There we go. There's a larger one there on that heatsink. So that may actually not be a MOSFET. It's got a few more legs than just the three. But they do have a copper back on them. A, probably a nickel plated copper back. But the amount of copper is so small compared to the effort of getting them out. I don't worry about those either. And again, I haven't seen anyone actually demonstrate that you can sell them and make enough money to make them worthwhile. There's some big chips on this board as well, but I'm not going to worry about getting them out. Maybe we'll try and lever this one off to see if it does come off. I'll give it some levering without stabbing myself. And it's poked through the bottom of the board, so that's going to make it difficult. Let's try the bigger screwdriver. It's just going to break the board up. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, yeah, and as I said, the extruded heat sinks, they don't weigh enough to make it worth more while. If you're pulling apart something that has a massive big heat sink, like a uh, big power supply or a, um, what have I seen them in? The, uh, the inverters from solar powers. They've got great big aluminium heat sinks on the back. They're worth grabbing, but not the little ones in my opinion. All right, guys, let's finalize this video. I've got everything sorted out here. I've made a few notes as per usual. Let's see what kind of return we get when we scrap out a vintage computer monitor. Well, our best items and what I chase when I get these are the nice Milbury copper wire out of the degaussing cable, which is a real bummer if it happens to be a, a more modern monitor and it's got an aluminium cable because there's virtually no value in that then. The yokes always have copper. It does go as number two because it's lacquered and it's got glue and there's also that other bit of uh, tinned one and the bonus coil. Uh, the transformers, look, I don't usually even pull the circuit board out to get those. When I'm scrapping one of these, um, I'll, I'll do it in about five minutes. I'll take the back cover off, I'll rip out the yoke and the Dugorsen cable, put the back cover on, and I might clip a couple of bits of wire while I'm there, but that's pretty much it, because that's the best value, and we'll show you that in a tick. Uh, the rest of it, well, we did clip out all the extra little bits of wire, got a few more coils off the circuit board, uh, I did get another chip that came off, so there was three IC chips. A uh, minute amount of brass we're not even going to worry about. That's just a ferrite to go into the uh, shred bin. A little bit of hardware, which is worth a bit to me, but I appreciate that not everyone gets value out of that. Uh, and here's what's left. And of course we have discussed all the other micro scrapping options for those that have a lot of time on their hands and just love to fiddle around saving every little microscopic piece of value they can and that's perfectly fine it's a hobby for many and hobbies are supposed to be enjoyable so if you enjoy it go for it okay on to the figures uh, not much value as you'd expect but you can see what i mean by the best value in the copper wire that um the the gauzing cable copper the milbury copper two dollars 24 just in that little handful two dollars 24 worth of copper and it has been higher than that that's at current prices uh, in Australia, in we've just gone into November, $10.20 my yard quotes for Milbury. Uh, the number two copper, or also known as burnt copper wire, uh, about $8 a kilo. So there's a little bit more value in that, $2.48. So just about all of our $5 or $5.60 was in those two pieces of piles of copper. So that's what we chase out of these monitors, and it's much the same out of CRT TVs. Um, if you can whip that out in five minutes, you're not really missing out on much. The Transformers, uh, they're down to 90 cents a kilo. They used to be at a dollar, so only 20 cents worth there. The insulated wire, about 50 cents worth, as you can see there. And the chips, the IC chips. Uh, E-Waste Bin is currently quoting $16 a kilo, which makes that 20 cents worth of chips. So you can see that they're probably worthwhile, especially the bigger ones. And if they're really easy just to flick out of the sockets uh, and you don't have to worry about trying to chisel them out, it's probably worth grabbing them. And as I said earlier, they don't take up much space. Uh, and for gold, you know, precious metal recovery, they may be worth more down the track. Who knows? 
And that's all the value I got. I didn't allow anything for my hardware or any of the other bits. Uh, we have a little bit of general rubbish now, which possibly I could have put back in the monitor. I could have, well, as I said, normally I would leave the boards in and not even not even worry about rescuing those thing, things just after the copper. So we'll finish up this adventure uh, on this video. I've got my really nice bit of copper and my other copper there. I'll put in my bins. I'll sort the rest of this out. The good thing is that I've got something else out of my shed. Uh, the other stuff can go to the transfer station for e-waste and hopefully be recycled. So there we go. I hope you got a bit of information out of that, a bit of enjoyment. Uh, another little scrap out. There'll probably be lots more as I find stuff in the shed. I'm just going to do videos on everything I drag out. In fact, I think the next one might be a welder, an old welder. I might scrap it out. I tripped over it the other night and took a bit of skin off my leg. And I think my policy should be whatever I trip over or whatever I get in, what gets in my road or falls on my head or something, that's the next to go. And I'll video it all for you guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.